Okay, basically, we got this question from Arjit Shanda. Can you please provide an exact idea of inbound marketing strategy for web development business? So first of all, it really depends where you live because I've explained this in a few videos, but I used to have that kind of inbound marketing strategy. Well, I used to do a lot of blog posts and I used to use SEO and SEO, don't get me wrong, SEO is really great, especially when you're getting started because you can get an influx of leads and that's what we all want, right? So it, it's great. I'm not saying it's not good, but depending on where you live and the type of competition you have, what I've noticed is that the clients I used to get from SEO in my market were the cheap clients, the cheapos. So the problem is it's an endless race to the bottom because everybody's trying to compete on price. And I tried to do that for a while, but then, you know, I thought, okay, I know my worth and I don't want to keep on lowering my prices. So instead of doing this strategy, and once again, because I know some people are going to tell me, SEO is really great and you can get a lot of customers. And I agree with that, depending on your market once again. What I find works be better for me is to actually join some networking groups. They can be online, they can be offline. I'm actually doing more offline than online, which is, you know, kind of strange because I'm the digital alchemist. But still, I got much better results with offline, face-to-face -face business networking. Now, I know with you know, the pandemic and everything that happened, it's not always possible to do that, but you can do it online. The idea is that you get to meet people and you get to meet the same people over and over again. And they're going to talk about your services to other people. And you're going to talk about their services to other people. So for example, in my group, I have a plumber. You know, what does a plumber have to do with the web designer? Like nothing, right? But the thing is that plumber is going to work for hotels. He's going to work for a lot of different clients. And because he knows me and he trusts me, he's bringing me business. And the same goes for all the other people in that group. And now if you join a couple of groups, you know, more than a couple is going to be hard because yeah, you need to be present, you know, when they have those meetings. But once you get to know the people in the group and they start trusting you and you trust them, you're going to, get, you're going to receive a lot of business and you're going to give a lot of business because on the other way around, if I have a client, I'm building a website for the client and just imagine that they tell me, yeah, I got some issues, you know, with the, with the, with the bathtub. Do you, get, do you happen to know any good plumber? So of course, I'm going to recommend the one and only plumber from my group because the idea is that in those groups, there's only like one person per profession. So only one plumber, only one electrician and so on per group. And there are various groups. So I strongly, strongly I encourage you and I want to encourage everyone that really want to get into this business to try to look at the other kind of solution like offline solutions that I just mentioned because I get it we all try to get the deals online and I know you work for some people but and let me share something with you because that that might ring a bell so not too long ago I needed to hire a developer really a back-end developer so I thought okay you know, platforms like Fiverr and Udemy, I had bad experiences with it. So I tend to not like those platforms, but I thought, hey, why not give it another shot? So I tried on one of these platforms. So I mentioned two platforms is one of these platforms, but probably I would have gotten the same results on the other platform. So I hopped onto this platform and, you know, I started screening for a few possible candidates. And I finally decided to work with one because... He seemed to be specialized in what I was looking for. I didn't have the time to do it myself. And I really wanted some, someone specialized in databases and, you know, a bit more complex stuff than front-end development. So I spoke with him, I mean, via the, the internal chat. And yeah, I thought, okay, that's, that's the guy I need. And he was based far, far away from where I met. So I really didn't care which country the developer would be from. I didn't care at all. Even for the price, of course, I was looking for a good price, but I, I was not looking for the cheapest one out there because to me, the cheapest rang like, yeah, cheap is going to be bad quality, you know, and cheap work is more expensive than, you know, regular standard costing work. So I decided to work with that person. And so I asked the person, when do you think you can deliver before I agreed? Because I was kind of in a rush, but okay, I, I don't like to rush people. So I could wait, I could wait a little bit, but I just wanted to be sure that they could deliver within the time frame I needed it to be de delivered. And they told me no problem. They, you know, that person was really confident, like, yeah, like piece of cake. And 
even for me, because I'm also a developer, even though I'm a front-end developer, but I've done some back-end before, when I looked at the task, the way I described the task, to me, it would be something like three hours, maximum five hours if, you, if you're slow. Because I had been doing um, something similar a few years ago with another developer that I knew where I live, and that's the time he spent. So I was like, okay, so I'm going to pay a fair price, which was higher than you know the minimum wage you find on those websites and so the guy told me yeah i can deliver like tomorrow because you know obviously today i'm, I'm busy and i can deliver tomorrow at a maximum in a couple of days so i was like okay that's fine so i decided to work with that person and the first thing the first red flag was that the person asked me something that even a beginner would not ask so that was like like a red flag but you know the deal was already on so i was like okay maybe they didn't understand quite what I wanted, even though my brief was, was really explained. So I decided to give them a chance and to give it a shot. But then, you know, a day passes, no news. So I ask, okay, what's going on? And they give me some kind of mushy answer, you know, okay, but I'm trying to trust them. Next day, nothing happened. So, I, you know, as a person, are you still on track? If you can't, don't worry, just tell me the truth. I just want to know. I don't want to rush you, but I need to know because, you know, there are other dependencies depending on that work. So we know right on track. I got a few issues on the server, but tomorrow, tomorrow, like I said, tomorrow is going to be fine. Then comes the third day. And so I'm waiting for <laughs> the thing to be delivered, but it never came. So then I messaged the person. They never answered. I tried to call with the internal system. They never answered. And, you know, I told him, listen, if you if you can't do it, just let me know. L let me know. No hard feelings. Just let me know. Even though I, are, I already wasted three days, but they never answered. So, you know, to give credit to that platform, which I won't name, they gave me my money back, which is good, you know, which is good. But, of course, as you can imagine, it, it doesn't make me want to go on those platforms again. This is like the second or third time I tried and it's always the same thing. Now, I'm not saying that all developers on those platforms are like this guy. Probably what I figure is this guy needs some money and he thought, okay, I'm going to just say I can do it and I'm going to start to quickly learn how to do it, you know, but then, yeah, it took, <laughs> it was going to take longer than, than three days, obviously. So see what I'm trying to say when, when I talk about those platforms is that, okay, getting the business online is nice. But online, the trust factor is not there. Even if I see, because this guy had like, I don't know, like 90 reviews with 4.8 stars. I don't know what's going on. Maybe maybe he paid his friends or he, he made some job for $1 for his cousins and asked them to, to give him a high rating. So, and, and what I find out is that the businesses I work with today, they've been through some similar stuff. So now what they want is someone they can rely on, someone that it can go and physically find if something goes wrong. You know, they know where I'm at. And I found that they're willing to pay more because they've paid for the cheap work before and they don't want to do that anymore. So like I said at the beginning when I started answering this, this question, I know some people that totally kill it with SEO. If you're in the market where it works like that, then by all means do it. It just doesn't happen to work well in my market. So I decided to go that route. But whether you do it online and offline, it's always the same thing. You need to build trust. And one thing that's definitely not going to build trust is cold emailing. And I mean, <laughs> once again, in my experience. And if you want to find out about that, I created a video that I recorded with Jeffrey from Lightbox. Go and take a look at this video because I totally understand that some people don't agree with this. But once again, I'm a professional. I've been doing this for a while. And it's not about how much money and how many clients you can get. It's about how do you enjoy the clients and the projects that you're going to get. And like I said, in my case, I found that by using networking, it works much better. I have much better clients. I have less red flag clients. So I much prefer to do it this way. Now, if you wanted, if you wanted to do it purely with inbound marketing, Today, I would use video because, well, we're talking here on YouTube because you found me here on YouTube. Some people are on other platforms. Video is just crazy. I think that the provisions are that this year, on the whole of the internet bandwidth, 
are going to be dedicated to video. So why you can still do it with blog posts, because blog posts still work really well, it would be nice to have a hybrid strategy. So I don't know, let's say you focus on building websites for dentists, start creating designs for dentists, and then talk about the legal side of building a dentist website. I don't know how it is where you live, but where I live, dentists, they have, they're really regulated. They cannot advertise the way they want. So it's really regulated. And if I wanted to have an inbound marketing strategy, I would create blog posts or, and or videos about that. Also, I would showcase some designs specifically for dentists. I would talk about all the things that dentists need on their website and how I can help. So that's the kind of thing you get the idea I'm, i talked about dentists but then you can replicate for other niches like lawyers uh, garages whatever you get the idea so basically to sum it up in my case i much prefer networking because it works much better i spend less time searching and usually when i meet a lead most of the time i'm going to close the deal so when i say most of the time it's going to be between 5.5 and 8 times out of 10 i'm going to close the deal which is good so i don't meet that many leads because yeah, when you do networking, maybe one week we don't you don't get any lead. The next week you get two leads. But the trust factor really works. So I found that I spend less time looking for clients. I get clients that pay better. So for me, it's a win-win situation. Now, if I wanted to build the biggest web design agency, maybe I would use a different strategy. I would maybe lower my costs, uh, try, try to hire some people that work for cheaper, but are, that are still doing good. Then I could do SEO. It, it really depends on the strategy. And basically, you can compare this to airlines. You can fly Emirates, you can fly Ryanair. It's going to be a different experience. Both are airlines. They have planes. They go from point A to point B. But the experience is going to be totally, totally different. So I hope that this long answer answer the questions.